Hi guys, welcome to Worms Maths Academy. Uh, this is your first time viewing. I'm just starting the Year 12 Methods course. Uh, so don't forget to like and share. Um, get your friends to have a look. Might be able to help you out a fair bit through the Year 12 course. Okay, so the first thing that we go through in methods is functions and relations. And we look at set notation, domains and ranges, that sort of stuff. So first, what I want to do is explain in terms of set notation, what everything is. The first thing we're going to look at is a intersects B, which means it's in both A and B. So it occurs in both of them. So this symbol here means intersects, i.e. it occurs in both of them. So if I wanted to shade in A intersects B, that's this area in here. If I have a union B, I should have had that there, I don't know why I don't. That's the same as what's in A or in B or in both, but you don't double up. So if I say here's A and then here's B, if I said what's in A or B, it's just anything that's inside A or B. So if we have an intersection, you don't count it twice. Uh, it's just A or B or both. And we have something called the addition rule. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersects B. When we get into probability, the reason we have this bit here minus the probability of A intersects B. If I work out the probability of A, I get this area. Then if I work out the probability of B, I get this area. I've accounted for this middle section twice. So that's why we subtract one times the probability of A intersects B. So we add the two together. Oops. We add the probability of A and the probability of B together. And then we subtract where they intersect so that we don't double up. And we, in fact, just get uh, the center once the intersection part. Okay, if I said to you, what's in A, but it's not in B, that's what this line means. That means it's in A, but not in B. Okay, so anything that's in A, but it's not in B, is this part here. We can also say that's A only, because it doesn't intersect B, so it's just A by itself. Okay, the last one, A is a subset of B. Everything that is in A is also in B. So it doesn't really count when we've got something like this because this bit here won't be outside by itself. We would actually have A is inside of B because A is a subset of B. It means that everything that occurs in A is in B as well. Um, so it's a subset, it means it fits into it. So if I said, if we had the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and I called that the set A, and if I said B is one, two, four, everything that's in B is also in A. So if I was to put it into a Venn diagram, there's A, everything in B is inside, of A, so one, two, four, and then I've got three and five. So that means that A is a subset of B because it's inside of B. Everything that's in B also occurs in A. Okay, here's some terms that we want to get used to. You should have seen this before. X is an element of A, so it just means that X can take on any values that are in A. So if I had a set like this, X could be one, two, three, four, or five. The real number set, well, that's just any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. So every decimal number, every single number you can think of, uh, that's a real number. So if you do specialist maths, you'll find out there's something called imaginary numbers. That's not included in the real number set. It's only real numbers. So basically anything, 
any number is a real number. The set of rational numbers Q is any number that can be expressed as a fraction. So 2 is a rational number. Stop doing that. 2 is a rational number because it could be expressed as 2 over 1. 5 on 6 is a rational number. When it can't be displayed as a fraction, then it's irrational. So root 3 can't be displayed as a fraction. That's not rational. It's irrational. So if it can ever be given as a fraction, then it will be a rational number. The set of integers, which is z, is any number that's a whole number from negative infinity to infinity. So it can be negative 1, negative 7, 22, but nothing in between, like none of your decimal numbers. So that includes negative. The set of natural numbers, all positive numbers are positive integers greater than 0. So 1, 2, 3, 7, like they're all natural numbers. There's a bit of debate as to whether it includes zero or not. So does the natural numbers include zero? Um, I would hope that if they ever gave you a question that had natural numbers, they would tell you whether they're including zero or not. The main thing is um, there's no, like some people say it is, some people say it isn't. And there's no one to come out and say definitively whether it includes zero or not. Okay, R plus is all real positive numbers. So any number greater than zero, um, 1.5, 237.64, any number that's greater than zero is a real number. R minus is any number, oh, that should be less than zero. I have to fix that up. Um, any real number less than zero to negative infinity. I must have copied and pasted that and then uh, not changed it, so I'll have to fix that. Okay, R plus or zero, that means real numbers greater than or equal to zero. So all we're doing here by adding the all zero, we're just adding in the number zero. If I said R plus or negative one, that would mean all real positive numbers and the number or, or the number negative one. So it can include negative one. Okay, so let's have a look and try and put into practice. I've got 1, 2, 4, 7, 3, 4, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So what we want to do is see, okay, what do they have in common first? So I've got 1 here. Is that in anything else? No, so it's going to go by itself in A. I've got 2 here. It's also in C, but it's not in B. So 2 is in A and C, but not in B. 4. 4 is in all of them. 7. 7 is in A and B. Uh, 3. That's in B only. 4. We've already done. 5 is in B only. 7. We've already done that. 2 is in A and C. 4. We've already done. 6. That's not in A or B, so it's only in C. Eight and nine. So there's our Venn diagram. So if I said, what's A intersects B? That's anything in here. Because it's where does A and B cross over? So because they're single numbers, we say A intersects B is four and seven. If I said A or B intersects C, so A or B is anything that's inside A or B, which is that there, oh sorry, that there, but I want it to intersect with C. So what intersects with C, this bit here does, so that is 2 and 4. If I said A or C, but not B, so A or C is anything that's inside A or in C, anything that's in A or in C, but it can't be in B, so we, we've got to disclude that 7 and the 4. 
So I get 1, 2, 6, 8, 9. What's in A, but it's not in B? Well, if we have a look here, what numbers are in A? 1, 7, 4, 2. Um, what numbers are not in B? 1 and 2. Okay. A intersects B intersects C. Well, that's where they all cross over in the middle, which is the number 4. A intersects C. Well, that's just this here where these two things cross over, A and C. So that is 2 and 4. Okay, so all means it's in one or the other. Um, intersects means it's in both, and not means everything that's not in that group. Okay, the next thing we look at is interval notation. So, if we look here, these were discrete values because they're just single values. All right, they're not what we call continuous. When we have interval notation, that's when we have continuous values. So if I had um, 2 and 5, and I said to you, I want all values between 2 and 5, including both endpoints, but we colour in both endpoints. And then this means every value between 2 and 5. If we have round brackets, then, like here, the ends are not included. And to show that they're not included, we use a open circle. If we have square brackets at an endpoint, that means it is included and we colour it in. Infinity or negative infinity always has a round bracket. So in this case here, I've got two round brackets. So this means all values of x between a, not including a because it's not equal to, uh, all the way through to b, but not including b because it's not equal to. If we wanted to include the endpoints, however, we have square brackets, so A to B. That means all values of X between A and B. And we're including the endpoints because I've got square brackets, so we have equal to. Here, if I have round bracket, comma, A, comma, B, that means we don't include A because it's a round bracket, but we do include B. So in this case here, when you have a square bracket, you always put an equal to. When you have a round bracket, it's not equal to. So in this case here, square bracket, equal to. Round bracket, not equal to. My lower number always comes first. So lower, and then your upper. Um, and then you just have to pay attention to whether it's a square bracket or a round bracket. If a is greater than, uh, x is greater than a, we could also say that that's a is less than x, so it's not including a, so it's not equal to, which is less than infinity, because I want all values of a to infinity. You can also say x is greater than a, so it's all values greater than a. If we do it with a square bracket, the only difference is it's going to be equal to. And of course, if we wanted to do that in terms of this notation, a is less than or equal to x, which is less than infinity. You can never have equal to infinity because we can't actually get to infinity. So it's always going to be a round bracket or a less than or greater than. It's never going to be an equal to. Here, I've got negative infinity to a, so it means I'm going negative infinity up until some value a, but it doesn't include a. So that would be negative infinity is less than x, which is less than a all values between negative infinity and a, but not including the endpoints. And this last one, negative infinity is less than x, which is less than or equal to a. That includes a, because I've got a square bracket. Um, but it doesn't include infinity, negative infinity, because we can't, we don't know what negative infinity is. Like We can't get to it. Because if I got to negative infinity, I could just subtract one, and that'll go to negative infinity minus one. So we never actually get to it. Okay, so here, x is an element of negative 1 to 3. You can see here we've got a square bracket, so we go to negative 1 and colour it in. 3, we've got an open bracket, 
and we want all values in between. So that there is negative one to three, uh, including negative one, but not including three. Here, I've got negative one to four, but this time we're not including negative one. We are including four and everything in between. Five to infinity. Now five has got an open bracket, so it's gonna be open bracket on the five and it's getting bigger, so it's going to the right, so it's gonna go right arrowed that way. Negative infinity up until three. It doesn't include three because it's not equal to. So you just go to three, put an open circle, and then it goes backwards forever because it goes down to negative infinity. Okay, here, negative two to one, negative two to one. Neither of them are included because we've got round brackets. So it's just negative two to one. It's all values in between negative two and one. So if I said to you negative 1.999, that's okay. If I say to you negative two, that's not okay. If I said 0 0.9999, that's okay. Um, but if I said to you 1.001, well, that's not okay because it's not including anything greater than one. And then I've just noted here, a closed circle indicates that the number is included. So less than or equal to or square bracket. An open circle indicates the number is not included, i.e. less than or round bracket. So hopefully that clears up a little bit of your understanding with <clears throat> um, interval notation and set notation. Now we'll have a quick uh, crack at a question. The linear function f such that I've got a domain which is from the real number set. So we're just using real numbers. Um, my f of x is five minus x. And it says it has range negative four to five. And you want to find out what the domain is. Now, this is a really common question on exam one, uh, sorry, exam two in the multiple choice. Um, a lot of kids will stuff it up because they'll sub, they'll think first, they'll sub in endpoints and just try and work out what the values are. But it's got a negative gradient, so it can be a little bit tricky. So let's put in negative four. If I put negative four into this function, I get five minus minus four, which is actually nine. And because it's got a square bracket, so we go to four to nine and it's inclusive. So we put a dot that's closed. If I put five into it, let's say five's over here. If I put five into the function, I get five minus five, which is zero. It's a round bracket. So I've got to put an open circle. So here, it's a straight line, so we know it's going to join, join up perfectly. Um, but our domain, well, what have I done? I just stuffed that up completely. <laughs> uh, that's our range. I just did it with our domain. So, just making sure you're paying attention. Nobody was because no one yelled out. <laughs> okay, if I've got negative four, that's my Y value. So to work at my X value, I say five minus X is negative four. Bring your X to the other side to make it positive and your four to the other side to make it positive. So I get nine equals X. So I get the point nine and the X value negative four. and that's inclusive. If I put five into that equation, I get five minus X is equal to five. Bring your X over, make it positive and subtract five on that side. So X equals zero. So I get the point zero, five. So zero, and then let's say five is here and that's an open circle because it's not inclusive. So my domain is from zero but it's not including because it's an open circle up until my X value here is nine, which is inclusive because I've got a closed circle. So zero to nine is this answer here. Now we, if I had have done it the other way, we still would have got an answer 
because that's what VCAR does. They try and trick you by putting it in the other way. So I subbed in, um, I subbed in negative four and I got nine. And then I subbed in, actually they haven't done it. Okay, if you just subbed in the endpoints, you might think, okay, if I put negative four in, uh, negative four equals five minus X, bring your X to the other side and bring your four to the other side, you get X is nine. Um, and then, uh, what was the other way? Five. So we set it equal to five, five minus X is equal to five. Bring that over, bring that over. We get X is zero. So you can't really stuff this question up much. There isn't much to, um, to give away. You just got to know that it's got a negative gradient. Um, usually the other trick is they give you the domain and they want you to find the range. And when it's got a negative gradient, um, students always put it the wrong way around. Okay. But in this case, my domain is from zero to nine. And of course you can check by subbing these values back in and making sure that they give you that range. The main thing here is your lower value is inclusive, but here your domain, it's not inclusive because it's got a negative gradient. Okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, I'll be back soon with domains and ranges, stating them and then finding domains, finding ranges um, and looking at implied domains. Okay, bye. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and hopefully I'll be able to help you all year through your methods course.